In the 1970s, there was a guy failing out of high school who promised his mom that he would take the SATs. He took it and scored a 1480 out of 1600. He scored so high, his mom and everyone around him thought that he cheated, even though he didn't. He has an epiphany, realizes he's smart, and just hasn't been applying himself. He starts going to class, stops hanging out with losers. He goes on to go to college, graduate, and start his own business. He eventually becomes a multi-millionaire entrepreneur. Ten years later, he gets a letter in the mail. He was one of 13 people sent the wrong SAT score. He actually scored a 740, and they had accidentally doubled his score. The doubled SAT score had made him believe in his core that he was intelligent, and that changed his identity forever. Every person on earth has an identity, whether they're aware of it or not. And one of our strongest human needs is the need to stay consistent with our identity. The only problem is most of our identities are negative. Charles Oliveira was no exception. During his first seven years in the UFC, he went eight and eight and was finished in seven of those eight losses. However, his subsequent losses to Max Holloway and Paul Felder caused him to hit rock bottom. Against Max Holloway, he suffered a freak injury that was reported as a minor tear in his esophagus, despite it being a serious freak injury that almost left him paralyzed for life. I lost the movement of the right side of the body. When I was internado, alguns reporters loucos falou que era esôfago, outro falou que era não sei o quê, tal, tal, tal. Na realidade de tudo, irmão, eu não sei te confirmar o que que foi. The media took the minor tear story and ran with it, giving him the label of quitter. Then, in his next loss to Paul Felder, a few attempted submissions ended up putting him in a bad spot. Paul Felder rained down elbows and Oliveira tapped to strikes. These losses had the world label Oliveira a quitter. Perdi outra em seguida e aí começou, porra. Tipo, será que é isso mesmo? Tá ligado? Tipo, quando meu pai pedia dinheiro emprestado na época, as pessoas falavam assim, ah, eu vou ajudar, mas nunca vai chegar, é difícil, tá ligado? E aí, tipo, esses caras falavam pros meus pais, falei, tá vendo? Falei, quando chegasse na hora dos bons, e tipo, os que eu bati era tudo ruim. Quando chegar na época dos bons, ele ia perder, tá ligado? Não ia andar. E aí, tipo, você imagina, você não... The people that didn't know him thought he was a quitter. And the people that did know him thought he just wasn't good enough. It drilled one message into Oliveira's subconscious, that he was a loser. And he adopted that identity subconsciously. Then, by a miracle, he switched gyms and ended up at Shootbox. These people became like family to him and helped him override his identity. Bom, nem falo mais no time, falo a família. Era minha família de verdade. Sabe, os caras que, tipo, chora, vibra com você. Você vê as entrevistas dos caras, vê os caras chorar, tipo, tá ligado? Tipo, o treinamento é diferente, você sente que é mais intenso. Eu queria saber, tenho curiosidade. O espírito, irmão. Todo mundo quer a mesma... Eu falo muito assim, irmão. Você quer voar, você tem que andar com a águia, irmão. Que você vai andar com o Pardal? O Pardal vai andar aqui, a Águia vai andar lá em cima, você tem que andar com os monstros. Pô, poder ah. tipo, fazer com que você se torne campeão, porque você se tornando um campeão, você vai abrir portas e eles vão chegar também, é o que a gente vem trabalhando gigante. At Shootbox, he's surrounded by people who actually believe in him and want him to succeed. Despite the entire world seeing him as a quitter, his new teammates told him he'd be champion and believed he had it in him. This constant positive reinforcement helped him start to chip away at his old identity. E lá, cara. Eu tô com as mesmas pessoas que me treinaram, aí você faz a volta. Uhum. Eu tô com as mesmas pessoas que me treinaram, que me ajudaram, que acreditaram em mim, sabe? Não os outros que ficam enchendo linguiça, falando besteira por aí, não. In psychology, this is called the Pygmalion effect. We rise or fall according to the expectation of those around us. Charles went from the people around him expecting him to fail to his new teammates expecting him to succeed. And their belief in him temporarily outweighed his own lack of belief in himself. Eventually, not only his teammates are telling him he'll be champion, but also his family, friends, and other UFC champions. Cara, esses últimas vezes que eu fui lutar, algumas pessoas tipo pô do mundo da luta, alguns nomes importantes, não vou ficar citando nomes que às vezes as pessoas não gostam, mas alguns nomes importantes, os caras falou pô cara, sabe chega perto do Charles. E a gente vê no olhar dele, a gente sente o espírito de campeão. Minha família, sabe? Fala, poxa, o quanto você mudou, sabe? O quanto você tem esse espírito de campeão, sabe? O quanto você quer, o quanto você tem essa gana de... But despite everyone around him telling him to be a champion, Charles was truly the last one to believe it because of how deeply the negative identity he had was embedded inside of him. It's because of something called the negativity bias. The negativity bias states that not only do negative events and experiences imprint more quickly, but they also linger longer than positive ones. Despite the whole world telling him he was great, he had years and years of negative conditioning that prevented him from believing it. 
It's not until he goes on a tear, finishing seven of his eight next opponents in a row, that he truly starts to believe it. But then everybody stingers. was calling him a quitter, all yeah. this, and it's like... And he just turned a corner and then became the baddest motherfucker in the weight class. Yeah. And not just the baddest motherfucker in the weight class, but one of the best motherfuckers in the sport. This is because he now has something called identity capital on his side. Every time Charles sees himself finishing a fight, he builds up a little more identity of a champion. It's not until he dominates Tony Ferguson that he truly owns it and steps into his identity of a champion. Keep in mind, this is before he actually had the belt. The inner world always precedes the outer world. Oliveira had to own his identity as a champion and truly discard his old identity as a quitter before he could receive the physical belt. Before fighting Michael Chandler for the lightweight title, he truly, truly feels like a world champion. Essa noite, é, 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 ontem eu se tornei campeão. E aí, tipo, pô, via, eu treinei a semana toda, viajamos na sexta, e eu cheguei em Las Vegas como campeão. Cheguei em Las Vegas como campeão, desci do, do avião como campeão, subi no carro como campeão, cheguei como campeão. Agora é só recuperar. Porra, vamos buscar aquilo que é nosso, né? Tô indo buscar nada aqui de ninguém, tá escrito já. He realizes, looking back at his unbelievable run, that he is the best lightweight alive. He truly feels like the champion, which is why when he finally gets in the cage against Michael Chandler for the belt, standing ovation for the athletes here in Houston as round two gets on the way. He finishes Michael Chandler and becomes the lightweight champ. It's also why, when they ask him about his quitting ways, he says, Because there's been this narrative about your career that if you get pushed, maybe you won't respond well. Michael even pointed it out beforehand, but you were, you were pushed and you responded well. Do you, do, you, do you appreciate that? Understand that that was the past. That was eight fight ago, fights ago. Now, I come here to, to win, you know? I don't come here to play. And so don't, don't think like that. That's the past. This is now. That's the past. I'm not even living that. I'm living the present. I'm living this moment now. He says that quitter is in the past because he no longer identifies with that person. His identity has shifted completely to champion. It's the same reason why in his next fight, when he misses weight against Justin Gaethje and is stripped of the belt, he says, I went to the octagon today to defend my title. We're going to defend the title. I'm not, I'm not, I, have to, I don't have to get it back. The name of the champion is Charles Oliveira. We all know that. And the identity and confidence are reinforced with each win. When asked about where his confidence comes from, he says, Charles is the last one to truly believe he is the best in the world, and only after he gets an irrefutable stack of evidence. 10 dominant wins against the very best in the world. Charles Oliveira's key to success started with his new team. If he had never surrounded himself with people who truly wanted to see him win, you would have never heard of him, and he never would have rose above his self-limiting beliefs. When he didn't believe in himself, his team believed in him, and he rose to their level of belief. He then had to rewrite his identity. All of us have deeply embedded identities, things we subconsciously believe about ourselves. Your life will never outgrow your subconscious beliefs. The outside world is simply responding to your deeply held beliefs about yourself. For Charles, his team believed in him enough to temporarily carry him through his own doubt. Then, after seeing himself dominate the best in the world over and over, he slowly started to believe in himself. After his team believed in him, his friends believed in him, and legendary fighters in the UFC believed in him, only after one of the greatest win streaks in UFC history did he finally start to believe in himself, and the outer world simply responded accordingly. Charles's mentality switched to becoming unbelievably confident due to his irrefutable stack of evidence. Having accomplishments worth being proud of leads to more confidence than anything else in the world. In short, competence equals confidence. But for Charles, and for all of us, it all starts with the inner circle. According to Harvard social psychologist David McClelland, the people you associate with determine 95% of your success or failure in life. You rise or fall according to what the people around you believe about you, which will eventually become your belief about yourself. Your belief becomes your identity, and your identity becomes your reality.
Hey, if you like this video and want to learn more about how to change your identity, check out this video here on Conor McGregor. I appreciate you and I will see you in the next one.